Welcome everyone. I'll leave a few moments for everyone to, to join this breakout room. Okay, I think it's time to get going. I'm just taking another look at the group and I think that we should be set to start. So hello everyone and welcome to today's session. Um, thank you very much for taking the time out and being here today with us. It's very much appreciated. We hope um, you enjoyed your, your break and are ready to take a closer look at Pathways for the Uptake of Climate Services via Public Procurement. Before I go over today's agenda um, and housekeeping rules, I'd like to thank the um, organization behind Climate Europe 2 for granting Protect the opportunity pr to present its, uh, itself and its achievements uh, so far. We as Protect are an active member of uh, the climate services community and stand firmly behind Climate Europe's two uh, aim to, aims to engage in community building through dialogue on climate services and innovation. With our project, we aim to enable public authorities to use state-of-the-art public procurement approaches to identify solutions through climate services that best fit the needs of uh, public demands. This webstival aims to focus on the different aspects of climate services, and we believe that our project is a good practice of innovation that uses pre-commercial procurements to increase the development of innovative climate services. Therefore, today we hope to be able to answer the question of how pre-commercial procurement can help cities and regions tackle climate change and start a fruitful discussion later on in the session as well. Okay, then I'll move on to the next slides. So before we start, I'd like to do some housekeeping. Uh, Yaro already mentioned it before, but this uh, web sub is recorded. So if you do not want to appear on camera, please turn your camera off and stay muted. Um, you'll, we'll be, you'll be able to receive the recording after today's uh, session as well. And we'll also be running a live Q and A at the end of the webinar. So uh, therefore we have enabled our ask a question feature. It's on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, so if you have any questions, just write them in the chat and um, we'll get to them as soon as we can. Also feel free to ask your questions by opening, uh, opening your microphone and camera at the end of the session as well. That being said, I'd like to go over today's agenda. Um, the first up is Melissa Campagno with GAC who will introduce the project a little bit further to you. Then Joanna Simona Roska with Aerospace Valley will provide you with the results of our mapping of climate services so far. And thereafter, Stefka Musva with Climate Kick and Ana Lucia Jaramillo with Covers will give you an overview of the project's trainings, workshops, and capacity building activities that are coming up. And last but certainly not least is Stefano Bali. Uh, with uh, Checo Sistema, who will introduce you to the Saber Spaces project. We will then finalize today's um, event with a Q&A session where, uh, as I mentioned before, you'll be able to um, raise your hand and ask some questions. So now, uh, that being said, I'd like to give the floor to Melissa, uh, the coordinator of the project. Um, so please uh, go ahead. Thank you very much, Yip. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am Melissa Campagno, and I am an innovation project manager working within GAC Group, which is the organization coordinating the project project. I am very pleased to be here with you for this session today. And over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to briefly present you the project project. I hope not to take too long because uh, the most interesting parts are going to be developed after my presentations by my colleagues. So I'll try to keep it short. 
So the PROTECT project is a Horizon Europe project coordinated by GNC that runs for two years. We kicked off the project uh, last June and it will run until May 2024 next year. The PROTECT project is being implemented by a consortium of 10 selected European partners that you can see uh, on this very nice map uh, and that bring uh, their expertise together on three key thematic uh, the essential to deliver on the project activities. Next slide, please. These thematics that you can see uh, on the slide here uh, gather innovation procurement approaches and specifically the pre-commercial procurement approach that Yip already briefly mentioned. The next one is environmental observation and its modalities, various modalities, including space-based, in-situ and citizens observation. And the last one that is at the core of the discussion of today, climate services, which are a solution and application that can help any type of public authorities, whether it is it a city, a region, municipality, or even a ministry or an environmental agency, for instance, to adapt to climate change and to mitigate its effect. Indeed, whether it's called adaptation or mitigation services or database tools to help address climate change challenges and needs, or decision-making support tools for climate resilience strategies, the market of climate services has been growing significantly over the past years, especially thanks to the variety and multi multitude of data collected through different environmental modalities and the, and the development sorry, of service application tailored to the needs of the public demand. So that's what interests us today. And these are the three core thematic areas of PROTECT. Next slide, please. So that being said, uh, what is the objective of PROTECT and what does PROTECT intends to do? So in a nutshell, PROTECT is not uh, a classic Horizon Europe project, let's say, as it aims to actually prepare the ground for a future Horizon Europe pre-commercial pre pre procurement call that is going to be launched in Q1 2024. This pre-commercial procurement call will unlock 19 million euros to fund the research and development services of European climate service providers interested in developing, um, sorry, in developing uh, services and uh, application that uh, are not yet available on the market. Protect is currently growing a community of public authorities and public buyers specifically in order to understand the challenges brought by climate change that they currently face and that they would like to overcome in order to help them to identify and to formulate concrete and realistic needs that can be the subject of this future PCP call. Now, it's also very important to mention that PROTECT is not only looking at this PCP call and growing this community of buyers that will undertake the PCP, it's also open to other public authorities and public buyers, even private buyers, who do not feel ready yet or mature enough to engage in a PCP, but simply want to build their awareness, their knowledge, or their skills on innovation procurement, on earth observation data, standards, certification, and data sharing principles, and who wish to better understand the climate services market, trends, and technologies applied to different sectors. So protect, in PROTECT, we are looking at five different sectors or application domain, how we call them, that can that you can that you can see represented here on the slide. So these are marine and coastal environments, energy and utilities, sustainable urban communities, agriculture, forestry, and other land use, and civil security and protection. Next slide, please. So very briefly on what is pre-commercial procurement, because it's important uh, for everyone to get a very little understanding of what we are talking about when we discuss pre-commercial procurement. So in a PCP, I will use that, that acronym from now on, uh, the public demand, so the public buyers, identify the best possible innovative solution and technology the market can develop by comparing alternative solution approaches from different technology vendors in parallel. In a PCP, the public buyers act as demanding customers who are articulating advanced solution requirements as well as future adopters of the solution. So by steering the development of innovative solution towards concrete public sector needs, pre-commercial procurement may trigger the industry and the markets to initiate research and development that was previously unthought of. 
In product, we are not doing that yet. So we are not yet entering the phases of a procurement. As you can see on the slide on the, with the green arrow, protect is actually phase zero of a, PP, of a PCP, and we are preparing the ground for the future PCP. So we will be doing already some of the activities that will be implemented during the PCP, such as open market consultation and feasibility study, but that's not yet the PCP phase. Next slide, please. So what have, we, what have we been doing so far? Uh, many things. Uh, some of you who maybe know the project already may have received uh, links to two different surveys that we've, we've been uh, conducting. The first one uh, on the left side of the screen uh, aim, was aimed at identifying the challenges and the enabling policy framework for pre-commercial pre procurement in European countries and to identify the preliminary needs for Earth observation climate, climate services. On the other end, the other survey link, the, the other survey that we've been conducted uh, since September time and that was led by our partner Aerospace Valley was intending to map the EO service providers, the EO climate service providers to understand the technologies which are already out there on the market and those that are only at the development stage. We've also uh, built the community, started building the community of public buyers, and we already have today a group of 60 uh, public authority authorities representatives, including public buyers, and we will continue growing this community in the next month. I'm not going to say too much about the mapping of climate action policy instruments and the main challenges and creation of the taxonomy of climate services that we've been doing, because this is going to be presented by my colleague, Joanna, in a minute. So uh, I will please move to the next slide to tell you a little bit more about the coming activities. So upcoming activities uh, that we are planning, uh, we will be working with the two key stakeholders of the project, of course, public buyers and public authorities, and we will try understanding a bit better a bit, their needs and the challenges that they face through different uh, workshops that we call pain point workshops. You are, if you're interested in participating, you can still do so. So if you would like to join us, please don't, do not hesitate to reach out. We've already started with the training webinars that we also uh, develop as part of Protect and that will be very informative and aimed at building your skill, skills and knowledge around different topics that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and we will be doing in a couple of months also with the markets, so with EU climate service providers, uh, e-pitching sessions to, again, with this idea of understanding better what the market can offer now or could offer in two years with solutions that are not yet uh, at the commercialization stage and that requires further R&D services in order to make it to the commercialization stage. Later, we will also do open market consultations once we have the needs from the public buyers more defined and that we can communicate those needs to the market so that we can invite climate service providers to present the way that they think they could uh, answer the needs of the public demand and the type of solution that they can imagine developing over the next years. The final stage, of course, will be securing, uh, let's say, buyers' engagement and preparing the future PCB call. Next slide. I will finish with a key message to the main two target groups that we have in the project. So the first one is addressed to public authorities and public buyers. Uh, if there are some of some in the rooms today, well, this is what you can expect if you decide to join Protect. You can expect to receive assist, assistance from us and from the different Protect partners in defining and aggregating clear and realistic procurement needs for climate services. You can expect also to participate in peer-to-peer -peer exchange, where you will have the possibility to receive or uh, share your good practices, your experience if you've already participated in PCP, or just learn from other experience, ask for tips, advices, and also ask more technical questions to experts that we have in the community or in the projects with whom we work in the project. You can also expect to receive insights into climate services market providers, as I said, through the e-pitching session that we will be conducting and the state-of-the-art analysis that we will be conducted, conducting, and you can understand which will allow, allow you, sorry, to understand better future solutions and technologies that could be developed. 
As I said, we started already with the training webinars uh, organized by Protect Partners, and this will be complemented by continuous knowledge and fresh information about Earth observation, climate services, and innovation procurement through documentation, webinars, workshops, and uh, any activities that we intend to do with this community of uh, practice through an online platform that we have specifically designed for the project. And ultimately, that will allow you to be strategically positioned for participating in this PCP call next, next year. Last slide, please. The last message will be intended to the Earth Observation Climate Service Providers. So if there are some, I, I imagine that there are some of you in the room today. Well, if you, you can also participate in PRODECT to get an insight into the public authorities current challenges and needs for Earth Observation Climate Services. Uh, this will allow to get more time and a stronger focus on R&D activities to create a new market in a two year time, for instance. It will also be interesting for you uh, because PCP, you will lower investments to generate new market opportunities. The PCB will be 100% funded, so you can get your R&D activities 100% funded. The services and application tailored that you will potentially participate to tailor will be tailored to the needs of the end users and, more, and therefore more likely to be purchased in the end. And ultimately, you will also be strategically positioned for participating and bidding for the pre-commercial procurement and receiving this funding. That's it for me. Thank you very much. I hope uh, I was not too long. I will pass now the floor to my colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Melissa, for this uh, uh, great introduction. I would now like to give the floor to Joanna, who will tell us a little bit more uh, about the mapping that we have been talking about. Thank you so much, Chip. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Ivana Simonaroska, and I'm working with Aerospace Valley as a European Project Manager for Space and Climate. And today I will be presenting you <clears throat> uh, what uh, the insights of our map mapping for Earth observation uh, services on European Union level. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you so much. The objectives of uh, the mapping that uh, that we are doing uh, is, uh, you know, is first to to be able to give an overview to the public authorities regarding uh, the market, uh, the uh, Earth observation market on the European Union level, in order like to um, to tell them what exists right now and towards where the market is going. <clears throat> At the same time, we are uh, also uh, trying to give an overview regarding the technology that they are that uh, they are being used nowadays, and also we're trying to identify lacks when it comes to technology that the providers need in order to uh, provide specific services, and also uh, we are trying to uh, give an overview regarding the trends that are happening, future developments uh, that are in early stages as much as possible. Thank you. Next uh, slide, please. Now I'm going to present you the methodology that we applied for this mapping. Uh, it is a combination between uh, uh, a survey research, a desk research, and also consultation. Uh, when it comes to the desk research, uh, first of all, we had uh, two uh, stages of the mapping. One uh, has been conducted through a survey between the 27th of October and 15th of December in 2022, so not uh, a long time ago, and we ended up with uh, having 80, um, 80 climate services that have contributed already to the PROTECT so far. And at the same time, we have conducted also a desk research from where we got 181 different climate services as well. Um, and uh, we also have a second stage of the mapping that happened uh, recently between the 17th of February and 20th of March, 2023. But for the moment, it is uh, an the analysis, it's happening, uh, it's currently happening. So uh, I'm not able to provide you yet the results, but uh, soon we'll be able to uh, tell you this information as well. All I can tell you for the moment is that um, 
the companies that have joined, uh, the providers that have joined Protect, uh, the number of it increased, and also uh, the, um, the climate services that will be uh, uh, featured into the e-catalog as well. And at the same time, we also had uh, consultations. In the first stage, we had uh, about 10, con 10 consultations because it was not one of our main focus. Uh, it was more like to help out uh, to help out all the providers that are in need for um, uh, guidelines or help in order to fill in the survey. But in the second stage, um, um, in in the second stage, we provide we conducted more consultations because what we have done was to take the, the results from the desk research and to try to contact the providers in order to see if they have an interest in joining our, uh, our project. That's why the desk research number for the second stage is not yet there because uh, um, it's, it's not uh, finished. But at the same time, uh, during these consultations that we offer during the second stage, we had one-to-one -one meetings with the providers where we had presented to them the project, the advantages. We, we also have uh, heard about the uh, de details about their services and we tried to uh, see if they are a good fit for uh, Protect or if they are not. Um, and also to support them in uh, all the procedures regarding the survey and to inform them regarding the activities that are uh, upcoming in the frame of protect. When it comes to the dissemination strategy for the survey, um, we have actually two ways. On our side, on Aerospace Valley side, it happened top down, which basically means that we have started to uh, have uh, to contact multipliers such as space agencies, clusters and networks, incubators, um, and also. Um, uh, space tech accelerators and after that we ended up with identifying uh, earth observation climate services providers when it comes to our uh, subcontractor that we uh, we have for this um, uh, for this um, task um, terawatt space they uh, have approached this dissemination in in the opposite way down to top because uh, um, it was, uh, it was um, the, one of the responsibilities that they had in order like, to uh, have uh, more one-to-one -one meetings or, one, or more direct contacts with the Earth Observation uh, Climate Services providers. Uh, next, please. When it comes to the application domains, as uh, Melissa uh, mentioned earlier, the main application domains that we're focusing in uh, Protect uh, Framework are marine and coastal environments, energy and utilities, and sustainable urban communities, but also agriculture, forestry, and other land use, and civil uh, security and protection. And if you go to the next slide, Yip, uh, we will... Um, you will be able to see preliminary results from the first stage when it comes to the contributions that, uh, that we are already having for, um, um, from the providers that, wa that uh, uh, wanted to join our project. So as you can see in the, um, um, in the uh, figure here, most of the climate services for the moment that uh, have joined Protect are coming from France but also from Netherlands is, uh, and uh, Spain, there are a big uh, number that has contributed. But we are also having uh, um, services from Germany, Italy, Belgium, Spain, uh, sorry, Portugal, uh, Czech Republic, Austria, Luxembourg and Hungary and Latvia. These numbers uh, and um, the variety from the countries that uh, the climate services are coming from in the second stage uh, has increased. Uh, and uh, I'm, I will, uh, I'm looking forward to be able to present your results in the future uh, after we will be able to do the analysis. Uh, next, please. As it can be noticed in the, in the current figure, 
When it comes to the distribution between uh, climate services and uh, by application domain, uh, we have uh, the most climate services that uh, are directing to, um, that are focusing on agriculture and forestry and other land uses, uh, being followed up by sustainable urban communities. And um, we have also several uh, services from on, on the other domains. Um, so it can be seen for the moment that in the market, from what we gathered, uh, the main focus uh, is on the agriculture and forestry and other land uses, but uh, it, it, it will be shown soon also that uh, the numbers for uh, the other application domains are, are slowly increasing, which is a good factor. It means that uh, the variety of the climate services is, um, is increasing. And um, it will be um, a good opportunity for um, it will be a good opportunity uh, for the public authorities in order to have a clear view of uh, of the fire application domain climate services. Next, please. Thank you. As it can be seen in this figure, we have. Um, uh, uh, we have the presentation of the climate services by the TRL. Of course, uh, we have a, an, a high number of the climate services, which are TRL A, uh, which are TRL nine as well. We have faced difficulties in uh, in getting in touch with uh, or identifying climate services that are in, in really low TRL level, between one to three. As uh, you might know, uh, these mostly are coming from universities or research centers, and uh, that's why it's a, a more it's a bit more difficult to identify them. Thank you. Next, please. Thank you so much. At the same time, here it can be seen uh, um, from what kind of uh, from what type of enterprise the climate services are coming from. And uh, the most varieties coming, uh, the biggest numbers uh, are from the small enterprises and also micro enterprises. But we were happy to see that uh, we, we received also contributions from public organizations or others, which can include the projects that are uh, happening ongoing in the, in the early stages as well, but uh, also from uh, the medium enterprises, also large enterprises. Thank you, next. Uh, we also have um, classified the climate services between three, uh, the three different types of application, like adaptation, mitigation, and uh, mitigation and adaptation. And it can be seen that the vast majority is focusing on mitigation and adaptation. Uh, and uh, um, the, yes, thank you so much. Next. And at the same time, it can be seen also uh, application domain uh, per country. Uh, and uh, it can be seen, of course, that France is the leading country for the moment regarding the contributions. But uh, we, will, uh, we are hoping uh, that uh, uh, all the other countries uh, will uh, have more contributions as well. Thank you, next. And here at the same time, you can uh, also notice uh, the, um, the repartition uh, for each type of application per country. And it can be seen that most focus is, um, uh, the, the main focus can be on the mitigation and adaptation, but also uh, it, um, the, um, the climate services related with adaptation and mitigation separately. Uh, it's also in, uh, increasing in, uh, in different countries. Thank you so much. And uh, if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask them in the chat. And now I will pass the floor to my next colleague. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Joanna, um, for this presentation. Um, it also leaves me wondering uh, what else uh, the PROTECT project has in store for us. And luckily, uh, my colleague Stefka and Anna Lucia uh, will explain you a little bit more uh, about this. So I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Stefka, please. 
Thank you, yep. Thank you everyone for attending. So as Melissa uh, told a little bit earlier, one of the big aims of Protect is to create capacity and raise awareness around what uh, public procurement and what climate services can do when combined. Uh, next slide, please. One of the activities that we are doing in terms of capacity building is the Protect training curriculum. Uh, it is a it is a curriculum containing 10 webinars that are taking place between uh, between now. We we just started yesterday actually and and autumn. As you as you can see in front of you, uh, currently this week and in two weeks, we are running four sessions that will have to do with innovation, procurement, climate services, and earth observation in a bit of an uh, an abstract way when we would talk uh, in autumn on for the five application domains then we would uh, discuss what uh, innovation and procurement climate services and earth observation can do in each of the five domains that you see here and that were presented um, that were presented earlier you if you can go to the next slide please thank you uh, so this is the these are the four training sessions taking place uh, now. As I told you today, for instance, we were exploring uh, we were exploring climate services. What is a climate service, and what may be interesting to the to the climate Europe to uh, crowd and community is that uh, we got questions as uh, if there is a label for for climate services or not, which of course made us think for uh, climate Europe too, whose uh, whose main idea is to is to explore the standardization of climate services. So we do think that um, that uh, the climate service webinars can be can be interested for you. I would post a link in the chat on how can you read more about them and register, and how can you how can you look at the registrations of those have or, that have already passed. But uh, you would probably be very interested also in the webinars that have to do at this stage with pre-commercial procurement because it really shows a methodology that. Uh, helps the co-creation of uh, climate services by putting the user and the user's very specific needs at the center of the co-creation process. So this is uh, this is from me. I would post uh, a link to the chat. Uh, don't hesitate to join us and to and to share your knowledge. Thank you, thank you, Yip, and thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Sevka. Here you'll have a second to check out the link as well. And then I'd like to leave the floor to Ana Lucia. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you very much uh, to all of you who are present here. I would like to invite you to join the pain point workshops uh, that uh, Protect is organizing on next week on the 28th and 29th of March on uh, five application domains. Please go to the next slide. Of, um, yes, so what are the five uh, W's for this? Pain point workshops. Eh? Uh, in principle, it's important that you know that we are preparing a pre commercial procurement, as uh, Melissa uh, clearly explained. So, we need to define these common needs and aggregate the demands of public uh, procurers. And in order to do that, we are organizing the online workshops in five application domains to explore the unmet needs regarding new non existing uh, um, climate services based on earth observation. And why do we do that? To identify four procurement challenges to be tackled via pre-commercial procurement. We're doing these workshops via online, uh, via Teams, and uh, uh, interested parties have received a link per the working group of uh, each domain. Um, this will take place on the 28th and 29th March, as I indicated. So next slide. So you will see here the five application domains. So we will have one working group per application domain. And we have the objective to assess, uh, identifying common needs, trying to define uh, functional requirements. Um, and it's important to mention that uh, formulating for, uh, functional requirements is a way to foster innovation um, in a manner that uh, uh, we don't state or describe solutions, but we indicate what do we need uh, um, what do we need uh, in terms of uh, the functionalities that are required? So uh, some material has been sent to those interested and invited parties, but you can send me an, an email uh, if you need to, um, you want to be invited and participate so I can send you both the materials and the Teams link. Next slide, please. Um, we based uh, the paper workshops in value methodologies um, that are used to prioritize and fine tune needs. 
Um, this will help us define some use cases and keywords on functions and performance that will be used later on to conduct a state-of-the-art analysis um, that will help us also to give an overview of the needs and later validate those uh, in a market consultation. So three methodologies are being used. The one is the functional analysis, a value stream mapping, that is a lead methodologies and value stream, value stream designed. Um, we want to obtain as a outcome of these workshops that some definition of functions, use cases, and value pilot point. Pilots. Next slide, please. Yeah, so to give you an idea of the methodology, um, here you see the EAP business case methodology, a methodology they developed in the context of the European Assistance for Innovation Procurement. We have five main steps for the preparation and innovation procurement, and these are the needs identification, the prior art analysis, and IPR research the analysis of the standard landscape and the open market consultation and the value calculations to define the business case and choose the best uh, way uh, or, or on the procurement strategy. So we are at the very beginning in the first step. Uh, next slide, please. We want to define the needs to see what are the problems that you're facing at the moment, current problems, future problems. And uh, this is why this, we organize these workshops and we want to have function-based specifications. As I mentioned, we want to obtain from this workshop use cases related to climate services using earth observation to describe the needs as functional requirements and to find some scenarios, some pilot pilots that we could define in order to have this ready for the pre-commercial procurement. Next slide, please. Here's the, the schedule for the workshops. Um, we have uh, um, on the 28th of March, the workshops of the working groups on marine and coastal environment, sustainable urban communities and civil security and protection domain. And on the 29th of March, we have the energies and utilities domain and the agricultural forestry and land use domain. Um, you can uh, request me to send you the link, or otherwise you can also look into the presentation and you see in the next slide, you will see the, yes, the links to the work sessions. If you click in each of the, the images, the icons for the application domain, you will find the link to go to those sessions. So this is all. We will really like to see you in the working groups and to have some uh, enjoyable sessions uh, that are really tackling your genuine needs so to prepare the pre-commercial procurement. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, um, please uh, go ahead on the chat. I see that there's some questions on the chat. I'm going to check it out. Thank you so much. I think the question that was asked has uh, been answered. Um, if not, we can get back to it a little bit later as well. Um, but otherwise, um, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Ana Lucia, and then welcome um, to the stage, uh, Stefano, for uh, his intervention. Great, thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay, okay. Uh, if I may, I would like to share my screen as I have to present a live demo. Okay. Um, okay, I will stop my sharing. Thanks. All right. You should now be able to share your screen. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? Perfectly. Yes. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. There is. Sorry. I have to stop the audio. Otherwise. Uh, uh, sorry, clear. Okay. Okay. So sorry. Um, can you see the screen now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfectly. So thanks a lot uh, to Climate Europe Two and to the Protect uh, pro Project. Uh, my name is Stefano. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Zecosystema. Zecosystema is um an SME, an environmental engineering company, and we are part of the, we are partner in the Protect uh, project. 
So today uh, I will present Safer Places. Um, Safer Places is a global platform and can be defined as a, a health observation uh, and climate service. And basically we combine satellite data set and climate data to provide flood risk intelligence in uh, urban areas. Um, Safer Places uh, started uh, its journey in 2018. Uh, we have been founded by EIT Climate Kick uh, with a demonstrator project. And we, the ecosystem was together with other partners, uh, CMCC from Italy and University of Bologna and Polytechnic in Madrid, GFZ and Mio, another SME company based in Italy. After the end of the project, uh, one of the, of the target of the purpose of the project was to develop uh, a startup, is to develop a commercial solution. So uh, as Zeco now we got the IPR to commercialize and continue to develop the, the, the platform. And recently we have been incubated in ESA. Uh, so we have uh, support from a European Space Agency. And last year we won also the Copernicus Prize uh, made, made um, by, um, proposed by uh, the Italian Space Agency. Um, so when we start our journey in 2018, we had in mind this question. So are our city ready to face the next flood event? So here in this picture, you can see an event, a recent event that happened in Italy in the Regione market. We had a pluvial event and pluvial event, uh, very extreme with a return time over than 100 here. And so this, uh, all these recent events highlight that uh, there is a strong need of data tools in order to protect our city, in order to protect uh, uh, our assets and save human lives. So we believe that the answer to this question uh, is related to a concept, a definition uh, uh, that we call flood risk intelligence. So for us, flood risk intelligence is the capacity to deploy high resolution data at building level. So the capacity to characterize which is the flood risk building by building. And this information should be available for either past, real time, and also future climate change scenario. And flood risk intelligence can be used to protect people and assets, for example, also to design adaptation and mitigation measures in cities, exploiting, for example, nature-based solution, but also can be used to support insurance, insurance sector or insurance company in parametric flood insurance schemes or in uh, flood risk disclosure, both in real estate uh, sector and in, uh, um, in uh, finance sector. Finally, we can use flood risk intelligence to support early warning, so to support civil protection in order to uh, a better disaster risk reduction strategy. So, um, so far we have seen that in order to deploy those, uh, this uh, uh, information, this flood risk intelligence, uh, there is a, a gap in terms of avail availability. So not all the city worldwide, but even in Europe, are not well covered with high resolution data set. So there is a need to fill the gaps. The second, uh, the second element uh, uh, that is related to the fact that in order to deploy, to, to produce this information, we need to run a complex hydrodynamic numerical model that are CPU intensive and are uh, cost at time uh, uh, intensive. So there is a need of a cost-effective solution. And, uh, <clears throat> Uh, the third element is the lack of democratization. So in order, the, the access to those information is now limited to few people. There is need to increase the audience of uh, users of this information. So the solution uh, is a, a SaaS, a software as a service. Uh, it's a cloud web application. So there is no any need to install uh, software in uh, in, uh, in local, so you, you can access to the platform through a common web interface through your uh, web browser. So from the technological point of view, uh, uh, our, our, our technology is composed by three main pillars, uh, three main uh, elements. 
The first one is the digital twin, so the capability of the platform to deploy a copy of the of the urban area. And in order to do that, we uh, integrate automatically a da digital data set from uh, uh, different uh, uh, provider. And in particular, we integrate terrain, so the, the, the orography, the topography. We integrate data related to building an asset infrastructures and finally we integrate uh, meteorological and climate information together with satellite data set so we can exploit several health observation data set coming from copernicus or coming from google earth engine amazon planetary there are there is a plenty of solution in order to exploit a layer to set up and build uh, the digital twin of the city this could be done with a worldwide uh, coverage the second element of the technology is composed by proprietary innovative artificial intelligence and physically based uh, flood hazard and damage model. Those models have been developed together with universities and research centers and has been published uh, and peer review uh, uh, in a scientific journals. So we have validated our tools uh, uh, with uh, several benchmarks with uh, uh, the standard approaches. Third element of, of the technology is the cloud computing. So thanks to the cloud computing, we are able to embed all this system, all these elements in a cloud framework. And this gives us the possibility to have uh, a scalable solution with the uh, required uh, CPU and uh, computer capacity in order to deploy results in real time without need to install any software. And finally, we can use the platform to, in real time, deploy uh, multiple scenarios, both historical real time of climate projection. And uh, the peculiarity of the platform is also the possibility to uh, play with adaptation and mitigation measures. So the user can design directly into the platform, see walls, change the permeability of the soil, adding, for example, water tanks. So in this way, it can test the effectiveness of adaptation and mitigation measures in the uh, in the city. Uh, the platform has a global uh, coverage, so you can activate the the solution for whatever city worldwide. And we are covering three types of floods. So we have proper model for pluvial, for pluvial, and for coastal. And the activation takes just uh, uh, five minutes. Um, so maybe I can switch to the demo of the platform. So this is the 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 web page. So you can access to this uh, platform. We will provide you the link in case you want to test. And you need to register. We'll give you the the credential for thirty days, and you can use the platform for in your cities. So the first step. Uh, is to create the digital twin so and activate the service for your city so you can do in uh, uh, whatever city you can write here the name of the city so i'm living here in rimini and can try to activate the city here in this area now for the demo i select just a small area but you can enlarge there is now some limitation as a, is, it's a demo in terms of a uh, uh, in terms of extension and then you have to select the data set so uh, automatically you can select the available data set for this area we have uh, the the, uh, the italian lidar data set or we have the copernicus so we, we select the two meters then we have to define the apsg the projection system and we start to download the, the data so this is the main input for our digital twin as the orography Play, play a crucial role in uh, in flood events. So uh, the, the, the important to detect the depression in the city play uh, the, big, the, the main role. So now we are downloading the available uh, LiDAR data set. In case you have your own data set, you can even upload your data set into the platform. And then we go next, we can download the building from OpenStreetMap. We download the land use in order to characterize the infiltration capacity and the lithology in order to characterize the, the soil type for the infiltration simulation. So this, as you can see, this is a real time demo. It's not a video. You can activate this uh, service in these five steps. And then uh, that takes just a few minutes 
uh, and then uh, you can save the project. So once you have saved the project, I have done several CT here in your uh, in your user space. Uh, you have you can go in uh, into the the service. So now we have, you have a more complex graphical user interface with tools for mapping zoom in zoom out the classical the classical uh, um, yeah the classical uh, tools for moving and, and play with the maps. And you have on the right side, we have the list of layer. You will see that the list of layer will increase as you're starting to make some simulation. And so we have the buildings and we have the LiDAR data set. Uh, here in the source scenario, you have the possibility to simulate rainfall, river, or coastal event. So as Rimini is as a coastal city, we can, for example, simulate uh, coastal flooding events. And you are free to select whatever scenario you want. Uh, we can preload even a static scenario characterized by specific return time uh, characterized by a climate projection. For example, uh, 2.7 meter is a uh, return time here in Rimini with a projection of 2,100. Uh, uh, so projected in, uh, no, sorry, projected in 2050. Uh, so we can select the extreme sea level of 2.7 meter. Then in case there are barriers, you want to draw barrier, we will see later on how to do it. Uh, but in this case, we don't have barrier and then you can select those to compute damage and you run the simulation. So again, the simulation is run in real time uh, here in the control panel. Uh, you can see the two, two new processes. So the, the coastal flooding now is running and also the damage building by building will follow. It should be up here in a few seconds. Okay, so this is the flood events. As you can see, we are working at high resolution. I can zoom in and uh, I can identify which is the the um, yeah the value yeah identify doesn't work today yeah maybe here yeah here uh, so moving with the with the identify we have, we have the value of water depth uh, at high resolution you can see we are now also able to compute the damage according to a specific flood depth damage function. Uh, yeah, in case we want to, for example, support cities, and this is, has been already uh, done in uh, together with the municipality of Rimini. So we tested together with them the, the capacity and the, the functionality of safer places. And there was a project uh, that uh, aims to uh, reduce the risk of floods uh, uh, in uh, together with a, a, a new sea promenade. So they they, they redesigned the sea promenade of Rimini and then they decided to elevate the sea promenade at the, the height of uh, 2.8 meters. So uh, the user, the end user is able to test the effectiveness of this investment, uh, of this uh, adaptation mitigation through uh, the draw of a specific barrier. So the user can draw, for example, here, can add a barrier and can draw a barrier that was uh, uh, developed in, in the reality. In the, in the, now I'm drawing just fast, but more or less they elevated the, the, the C promenade at the elevation of uh, 2.8 meter. Uh, yeah, 2.8, okay. So now I can go back into the wizard and can, uh, I would like to make the same simulation of before with the same elevation of the, the, of the sea level. And I want to also apply the damage, but now we have the barriers. Uh, so now the simulation is running, will take uh, 20 seconds to have the first results. And we can compare now the results and we have also tools in order to support the user to make a sort of cost benefit analysis uh, in terms of reduction of uh, damages with and without the barrier. So as you can see here, it's evident that the, 
the barrier can reduce the risk and the extension of the of the hazards and uh, the same so now we this is the damage without without the barrier and here we have the damage with the barrier okay here with and without and we have also this tool for uh, here we can compute for example the damage in uh, this area and we can compute the the damage with the, without the barrier is uh, one uh, 138 million of euro uh, this is a, an extreme event obviously but uh, we can com we can compute a sort cost benefit analysis yeah if i switch on also the other layer we can we have here the comparison so the reduction of the uh, of cost of economics losses is quite evident and so we can make some cost benefit analysis in order to evaluate the effectiveness of the investment in nature based solution in the new C promenade and so the platform can be used used also to produce and map uh, pluvial hazards and so the user can define the intensity of the of the rainfall can take into consideration the infiltration rate and run the simulation as done before and quickly we will have uh, the map of uh, of the flood events uh, related to pluvial. Yeah, now it's it's running, and we will see uh, a typical output of pluvial hazards that is related to the capacity of the of the flood to fill the depression of the of the of the city, and. This can be very useful also to evaluate which mitigation measures. Okay, yeah, this is the yeah an event of pluvial flood events really uh, characterized by 100 millimeters. So it's an extreme event again, and the user has a possibility to detect uh, building by building which is the water depth and also compute the uh, the damages. Uh, we have tools for uh, analyzing uh, inside the. <clears throat> inside the, the city and the, the, the single watershed inside the, the, the orography of the city, we have a sort of uh, water balance. And uh, thanks to this tool, we are able to detect how much water is affecting this neighborhood and where the water is goes and with, uh, uh, which is the water that comes from upstream. And so we can design mitigation measures be, uh, neighbor by neighbor. We can add, for example, water tank in this case, for example, <clears throat> we need uh, we have a spill volume of two more more than two thousand cubic meters and a water volume of two hundred. So that in order to reduce the risk here, we have to invest in mitigation measures that are able to subtract uh, something like three thousand cubic meters. So this tool gives the possibility to the end user, to the municipality, to the urban planner to effectively design in details mitigation and adaptation measures in order to, to reduce the risk. Uh, yeah, these are the main functionality. We have other functionality related to the river floods and there is possibility once we have generated results to export as a GOT file or shape file into your GIS system and to make your uh, own analysis. Uh, yeah, so I will move uh, towards the end of my presentation. So this is the capacity, again, of the system to, to simulate flood mitigation measures. And this is one of the peculiarity and, and the flexibility of the platform is the, something unique in the, in the panorama of climate service for cities. And this is the, the study that we have done in Parco del Mare. This is the, the project in the, in the, in the picture in the, in the bottom. You can see what has been real, realized by the municipality of Rimini. And yeah, these are the scenarios that we have already seen uh, in real time. Uh, that's all. I invite you to visit our website, saferplaces.co, to scan this QR code. You can have a look about one minute teaser if you want some more information. And you can reach out uh, with, uh, through an email or uh, through uh, yeah, contacting us through our social media channel. Thanks a lot. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Stefano, for this 
very insightful uh, and interesting uh, intervention that you just had. Um, if you agree, I will uh, reshare my screen again. Yeah, I agree. All right. Then I would like to ask if there are any questions from the audience. Feel free to raise your hand or type your message, message in the chat. Uh, now is the time to do so. We have a few minutes to um, discuss anything that might come up. So please feel free to open your, your microphones and cameras um, or write a quick message in the chat. I'll give you a few moments. Okay, I guess that means that the presentations uh, that we had today were all very clear and left uh, no questions unanswered. Um, so this is the last chance to, to raise your hand um, and to ask a question. And if not, um, I would say, please enjoy an early finish before we uh, reconvene again tomorrow. I see that question has come up in the chat. I think this is a question for Stefano, um, I'm not 100% sure, but the question is, to which extent is uncertainty considered? Uh, so uh, there is a way to co also to compute uh, ensemble of simulation, for example, if you have a, if you want to simulate uh, different extreme sea level provided by an ensemble of a meteorological or ocean model, uh, you can take into consideration uh, and compute uh, the uncertainty of, of the results, but uh, this functionality is not out uh, implemented in the, in the platform so far. Uh, this could be something that we could add uh, as a functionality, but uh, yeah, theoretically the user can simulate multiple scenario and compute ensemble statistics uh, pixel by pixel. And I think it, it, a follow-up question from Roger is, is that encouraged to, to add it to the platform, let's say? Yeah, yeah, it's a good, uh, yeah, it's a good point. Usually in climate services, uh, the computation of, of uncertainty is quite important, even to communicate well the results. Uh, uh, yeah, that could be, it's not so easy in a raster-based uh, application as, as we have to compute pixel by pixel the uncertainty uh, respect the uh, time series, for example, but uh, this could be theoretically done. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, anyone else that would like to ask a question? Now is the time. <laughs> if not, um, and um, you know, we are all multitasking, so perhaps you're forgetting something, or or we have um, overlooked something. Um, so, in case you're you're still left with some questions, please feel free to uh, contact us at any of these uh, channels below, and we we would be more than happy to answer um, whatever questions you have uh, there as well. Um, and on that note, I would like to close today's session and thank everyone, uh, especially my colleagues in the organization of the Webstable uh, for participating and you, the participants, thank you all very much. Um, and um, I wish you a very pleasant rest of the day. Thank you.